video is about the importance of goats on our farm. We don't own any goats, but we do have goats browse around our land. And we get goat manure. Because at this stage, we're completely out of our own compost. You can never have enough compost. We're going to carry on composting. Carlos clears his goat shed out about once a month, but twice a month if it's raining. It's hard work. It took three men four hours to clear out those sheds. I'm going to strim a lap. I'm going to strim a lap. I'm going to strim around these little trees before we add protection from deer and goats. So we made a little protection for our little purple cherry tree here. We've got a couple of two meter lengths of rebar, about a meter and a half of chicken wire, and a bit more than a meter and a half of the heavy wire that we use for the uh, vine trellises. And we've got a little, little bit of fine wire here, just holding the ring of chicken wire onto the rebar, stop it from going anywhere. This should be enough to protect the, the little tree from the deer and from the goats. So you might have seen we've got plenty of deer roaming around on our land. And we'll show you over here what happens when they have a nibble of a tree. This is a stone pine the pine nut tree. Yeah, it is a dead stone pine tree. And this is what the deer do. They have a nibble of the bark and they scratch away at the bark. And when that happens, a tree can die, especially if it is ringed all the way around. I mean, it is ringed all the way around just here. And that bit there. And this tree is properly dead. So we're gonna protect our little trees. 
we're going to make a few more cages and protect some of the trees uh, that we want to uh, grow up tall and strong here in our forest forestry uh, section of the land. We've got a hawthorn, a lilac, and there's a little fruit tree. And last of all, there's a cork oak. We'll show you that later. I've got the famous steel cutting scissors. This is the little cork oak and it was this high when we bought the property two years ago and it's still the same height because every week the goats come along and nibble the top nibble the new growth so we're going to give it a little bit of protection not just from the goats the deer as well and hopefully this will turn into a full-size cork oak we may never see the cork from it but they're beautiful trees. They're native around here. They have many benefits. They're fire resistant. They're evergreen. And we love the shape and form of them. So we're going to give it a little bit of protection, a little bit of help to develop and mature into a full-size tree. We've got another one off. This one? Yeah. Dead. That one's across. Take that out. So this is a protected tree. Try telling that to the goats. I can let the bottom dry. Right, time for the cage. This is the only cork tree on this side of the land, you know. Yeah, that's why we're protecting it. It's the next day. It's sunny. Finally got my shorts on. The little cork oak is in its cage. Let me show you the other trees that we've protected and some that we didn't get round to doing because we have a different plan for those. So let's go. This is our surviving stone pine, but it's also had a little bit of damage, but we need to make a bigger cage for this one. Right down here, is the only hawthorn we have on the land. We were going to put a cage around it, but I've decided that we're just going to leave it and let it do its thing. It doesn't really matter if it grows into a tree shape or just stays like a bush. Hawthorn is a wonderful plant to have. The blossoms 
come out very early in the season and the heady, heady fragrance is phenomenal. Something that I remember as a child growing up in Ireland, always picking the hawthorn, but the hawthorn didn't flower until late April or May. So it's quite interesting seeing that it's come and gone here already. So we're not going to put a cage on this one. So right now we've got to prepare all this cardboard for another project and you'll see that in a future video. So bye for now. See you next time.